What's going on guys? Motivation Monday, episode 108. And I'm here at the ATC out here in Mississauga with Mr. John Rush. Up, man? Hey man, thanks for doing this with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. We just got a crazy workout in with Jack and Shay, and oh my goodness, that was pretty nuts. This is where you're getting your work in, and also you're out in Niagara as well, or? Yeah, I live in Niagara with my parents and my brother and his baby. I commute up here a couple times a week to work out and just be around the guys, because it's such a good environment, you know, like right. kind of getting that competitive in because like working out on your own is good but it's not as competitive as right. working out with you know like 15 other yeah. cfl players you could always kick it up uh, that extra yeah match, right exactly. now, i got a little taste of it today i know that you know you played college at guelph yeah and now you're playing for winnipeg as well can you talk a little bit about your journey through football maybe even from high school to college and to the pros what was it like for you and what really pushed you to do football and, and be consistent with it yeah, my biggest thing was I just, I love football. Like I love football so much. It was like always so much fun for me, like from the second I started playing it when I was like nine years old. So like that was my biggest thing was I always just loved playing it. And then I started getting better at it. And right. as like we progressed through things from high school, like it sucked because we only had 16 players on our team. That's a small team. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like you need 12 on the field. Yeah, like, I mean, it's 16, so. <laughs> like it, it sucked. But then when, when I got to university, it was like a lot more fun because right. You know, you're around, we had a hundred players on our team and like they were all there to play football and you start learning a lot more, you get better and you start progressing and you know, I had my drawbacks, you know, I tore my ACL, I've, you know, broken every finger in my hand, right. <laughs> like, like I've separated my shoulder. It's football, like we all had crazy yeah. injuries, right? Like, you kind of just keep progressing through it because you love the game, you know right. what I mean? Like, and you can kind of see that progression in, in a lot of places in your life. You don't really know if you're getting better or not, but right. in football, you're doing it in practice and you're going right to film work and you're watching it in film and you can see yourself getting better all the time. Yeah. So that was something I thought was really amazing. And I'm just like, man, I love doing this. I love just growing and getting better all the time. Right. It's just a constant evolution of yourself. Yeah. When you get to college, it's a different ball game. And then even from there to the pros, I'm sure the jump is a lot different than it was even in college. I can imagine, you know, you're, you're playing with the best of the best. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about, you talked about that adversity you went through. I know personally, you know, playing college by myself, I played at Bishops and yeah. I know how much, you know, film, training camp, the stuff is deadly, right? There, it's a lot. Yeah. There's so much invested into that. Was there ever a time that maybe with your ACL, you went through anything? Was there ever a time that you were like, man, or was it just always, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 no, for sure. There, there definitely was times, especially when I tore my ACL, the team sent me out to California to train or like rehab it. Right. With like I got it rehab professional athlete. So I'm super fortunate to have that opportunity. But at the same time, like I went to a different country by myself, didn't know a single person right. with a torn ACL and rehab it for eight hours a day by myself. Like, well, I mean, I have my training, but like right. I was by myself, you know right. what I mean? So like, you know, the mental strain of the injury alone was taking a huge toll on me. And then the fact that I was away from my family, my friends, my like teammates, my coaches, all of that for eight months. I left Canada um, in December. So I missed Christmas, I missed New Year's. Man. You know, I had to see all my friends and family like doing Christmas together and everything. And I was sitting in California by myself being like, man, like how bad do I want this? Right. Like, you know I mean? I, like, I stuck it out and like, I obviously wanted it. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, of course. I obviously course. did everything and I wanted it obviously that bad, but like there's definitely times where you're like sitting there like, man, like this sucks. Right. But at the same time, I always knew in the back of my mind that looking back on it, knowing that I quit or not knowing what would have happened next if I didn't keep pushing through would have sucked even more. Right. It's just that fear of not knowing. Yeah. Like you'd rather put yourself out there and just give it your best shot as opposed to just not even knowing. Yeah. I can relate to that dealing with so many injuries yeah. in my career as well. But if you could say that you took one lesson out of that injury in particular, what do you think it would be as you moved on forward into your career? Definitely just to like keep going. Just like keep just, pushing through. Yeah. Like and like that like translates to like everything in life. And if you just keep pushing forward and you're taking it one step at a time, it'll get better. Like no matter what you're doing, you're gonna get better at it. Right. The situation's gonna get better. It's inevitable. Right? right. And especially with an ACL injury, like that's an eight to twelve month rehab, right? Sometimes it like it felt like it was just like never ending. Like I was like never gonna come back from this injury and everything like that. But 
all of a sudden eight months had passed by and I was better. And it was just like, wow, like, like yeah. I got through this, you know yeah. what I mean? Like during it, it sucked. But then after I was just like, wow, I got through this. And so it's just like all about taking that one step and just like keep moving forward. I really like that. And just the persistence and like just being resilient. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, sometimes they fear the amount of time something will take. Like even you were saying for the injury recovery, but it's like, we forget that that time passes anyway. Exactly. So like even if it's a course or something mm -hmm. or something you want to do, you might as well just get started. I exactly. think that's a big problem that a lot of people have, but I really like that you touched on that. Before I get into my last question for you, I just want to ask a little bit, because I know that you're vegan now. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you don't look much different, like you're still looking still yeah. lean and big. <laughs> yeah. And so can you tell us a little bit about how that's been? And like, I'm yeah. sure it's really important to you as well. Yeah, I know for sure. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram and all that, you kind of know I'm a huge dog advocate. I love animals. I love dogs. I volunteer at a bunch of shelters. I just adopted a 150 pound dog. <laughs> no Massive. What kind of dog uh, is he? He's a great Pyrenees. Nice, and he's man. just like, I mean, like he's as tall as me on two Big feet. old boy. Yeah, so I love dogs and a couple years ago, someone approached me about, they're like, yeah, like you love dogs and all that. It's amazing, but like, you know, pigs are actually smarter than dogs. Cows have best friends. They started saying all this stuff to me. I'm like, oh, like I kind of, I didn't know all that stuff. It was interesting to me. And then I kind of like started researching it more, researching the benefits of like, I was growing up my hair for cancer and, right. and being vegan is really good for cancer prevention and stuff like that. And I'm just like, well, I mean, like, why am I growing my hair for cancer and then eating something and putting something on my body that has the potential to give me cancer right it, it didn't really make sense so i mean it just it, it made a lot of sense for me to just go vegan and I, honestly i feel great i feel amazing it it's helped my it's helped the arthritis of my knees and really yeah this is the leanest my body's ever been and i'm still i'm still 220. man yeah, so. that's crazy because i think you don't know what you don't know yeah exactly so even though you talked about that person just sparking that in you yeah. you doing the research sometimes it's just a matter of going out and doing the research ourselves yeah but when people are invested into something and they represent something and they do something for a bigger purpose than themselves. Yeah. I think that it says a lot about them. So I definitely admire that. The last thing I want to ask you is, well, you've been through all this adversity, you know, so consistent, so persistent, really just embodying what it means to be resilient. What do you think is one lesson that if you could go back and talk to your younger version of yourself, maybe a little John Rush on the, on the football field, getting his first sack lunch. Yeah. What kind of message would you have for yourself or what, one piece of advice would you give yourself? It would definitely be to do more. I feel like a lot of times, especially when I was younger, it's not that I didn't work hard. Like I worked hard my entire career. Like I, I always pride myself on being the hardest working guy, but sometimes I was the hardest working guy and I feel like I could have still been doing more. I wasn't because I was still outworking everybody. So I'm like, oh, like it's good enough. I'm still outworking everybody. I was like here and everyone else was like working at this level and I was already at this level, but I really could have been working at this level. You know what I mean? But I got complacent because I was like, well, I'm already outworking everybody. Why do I have to do more? That doesn't just go for football. Like I could have been more like involved in the community. I could have been doing more in schools and, and more in schoolwork. Like I, I didn't really start trying in school until my fifth year. And then when I started trying, I was doing really well. But no, I, that, I could relate to yeah, that. I think we all can a little yeah. bit. So like I could have been doing more and I could have been trying harder and I just kind of thought I was doing enough and like I was because I was already working so hard I'm like I'm, I'm working hard enough like I don't need to work harder and that's one thing I've realized I always try and push myself to like max out my effort and max out everything I do because I don't want to leave it on the table right. like I don't want to look back and been like yeah like I was working hard but I know I could have been working hard more. right so yeah. like now I try and just do everything at least a hundred percent. I think one of the big things for me was just walking away knowing I did everything that I possibly could yeah. to chase that goal. And then if I have to move on to the next one, like whatever exactly, it is, yeah. I really like that you said that doing more, but not only doing more in comparison to others, like you said, because I feel like when you look at other people and try to compare yourself to them, that's when you might be able to limit yourself. Yeah. But if you're competing with yourself and trying to be the best version of yourself, then you understand enough is never enough. Exactly. There's always something to do. There's always more to learn. There's always something else that or another way that you can add value. Yeah. And man, I, I really I really like that one. But hey man, I appreciate you coming yeah. on the show and thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having and, me. And uh, make sure you go check out John Rush, check him out on Instagram, check him out on YouTube. The guy's doing amazing things and adding a lot of value, so go check him out. Until next time, a lot of people are sleeping in this world. It's time to wake them up, let's get it. Appreciate you, hey, man. Appreciate you. Thank you Stop.
Okay, yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that. <laughs> I, what I was gonna say, I just thought of it yeah. now. But the only guy with I think the better, better flow than I have, like, <laughs> I, like, I can honestly genuinely say that this guy's flow is mean. But um.